Man, I ran out of water. Be so for real right now. Hey y'all, it's Michaela from the Procurator Didn't Already Know, and today I am doing a regular, regular old wash and go. First of all, I gotta whip my scalp, but that's all I'm doing today because I'm supposed to be taking pictures soon for my birthday, and I wanna do a hairstyle that I can rely on. Cause I was thinking about doing a flexi rod set, but it was cute. But the thing about that flexi rod set was it literally only lasted like three days. Like day three, my hair was messed up, so. I'm gonna just do a wash and go. Um, I'm gonna show y'all the products in a minute. Before I really like jump into things, um, you can subscribe, you can like, comment, share, um, follow my social medias, all that stuff. Get 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 it together on this channel, you know what I'm saying? So while I'm just sitting here talking about nothing and oiling my scalp, you can just go ahead and do those things, you know. But it's no pressure, you know, but you might as well since nothing going on right now so yeah I just want to do a quick little oil real quick if you haven't done all that by now or like anything then I don't know what to tell you doing a regular old regular old wash and go I actually don't have any product in my hair so I guess I am still trying something new today usually I have a leave-in in my hair but I decided like if I'm gonna be using a cream a curl defining cream then what's the point of using a leave-in because like listen some of these curl defining creams are more moisturizing than a leave-in will ever be. So yeah, this is my leave-in today. It's the Creamy Nature Argan Oil Curl Activator Cream. So yeah, I'm gonna just be using that because I feel like there's the thing I just said, but also sometimes the leave-in doesn't mix with the gel, which I'm using the Wetline Extreme Gel, my old reliable gel right here that I love to use for, for my wash and goes. But yeah, sometimes it's not the cream that doesn't mix with the gel. Sometimes it's the leave-in and you, like you'd never suspect it because it's a leave-in, right? But no, like sometimes it's leave-in. So I've actually done this combination before for my Christmas hairstyle that I did on the last day of my 12 days of Christmas. And you know, it actually like came out really good. The only problem was I had ink jackets in my hair that I didn't wash out. And the whole reason I decided to do something like completely different was because the Aunt Jackets was flaking. Don't, don't know, you know. So yeah, it ended up flaking through this combination. So I just ended up having to wash it all out. But, you know, I did the test thing where I put both of these in my hands and rub them together and like they mix perfectly fine. So I guess the Aunt Jackets just really don't want to mix with nothing. But so yeah, and my hair is already detangled. Since I just washed my hair a week ago, I literally just detangled my hair with conditioner and then I shampooed right after. And that was my wash day, like that was literally it. I didn't do too much cause it's only been a week. So I don't need to do all the steps that I normally do, you know? So and my hair's a little bit on the drier side. So we're gonna spray it with water. One thing I've realized is with wash and goes, you gotta spray a lot of water. Otherwise, like, it's a good chance your product's not going to absorb all the way. But that's me speaking from a porosity standpoint because I have low porosity hair. So definitely need water to absorb the product better and quicker. Especially because this um, this curl activator cream is kind of thick. It, it don't move. <laughs> definitely want to have enough water. But yeah, let's get into the real topic. I saw this TikTok that said, I think we should extend the hair typing system or whatever to 4f or something something like that you know i was like i actually commented on it and i was like i think the problem is we think the hair typing chart is meant to be like you know 4c is like a whole hair type but no like that hair chart is literally just talking about curl patterns okay and pattern is literally one factor <laughs> out of a million that can affect the appearance of your hair. But really curl pattern doesn't affect how your hair behaves. So you can have, y'all look at this definition and I haven't even used gel yet. Look at it. Don't play with her. Don't play with Miss Cream of Nature, okay? You can have a 4C curl pattern, a 4A curl pattern, whatever curl pattern makes you see this example more. 
but you can have whatever curl pattern, but density, porosity, thickness, the texture of your strands, all these other different factors that actually matter will have your hair looking totally different from, you know, what is deemed like 4C, 4B, 4A. Like categories are literally just curl patterns. And I don't think people seem to realize that. And I think because we've been using this chart to identify our hair types and not patterns for so long, it's kind of like we're in too deep now. And this is just how people have a ballpark identification for like how to categorize their hair. Cause I know like y'all are probably like, Michaela, like you be putting that you have type four hair in all your videos and da da da. And I'm like, yeah, because if I put, I have low porosity, medium density, like y'all probably not gonna understand that. Um, it's easier and quicker to say and get to my target audience. Like I just have type four hair because you know, you know, according to the standard of whatever type four hair is, I do have type four hair, but I'm here to say type four hair really is not a thing. Our hair is simply too, it's too complex for that. Like we, we don't just have type three, type two, type four. It's way more complicated than that. Um, even like within 4C, 4A, 4B, within those individual categories, there's so much more. There's so much more. Like you can have a drastic example. You can have fine 4C hair. And by 4C hair, I mean like the curl pattern, right? You can have a 4C curl pattern and you can have a fine texture, which means like your individual strands are soft. Fine texture, low density, and low density means like, if you were to take like a section of your hair you wouldn't have that many hair strands in that section compared to like high density, you'd have a lot of hair in that one section. So that's what I mean by low density. So like compare that to how somebody with a 4C curl pattern looks when they have high density core strands, which means your strands is thick, okay? Com like that's gonna look completely different. And you can also have 4C hair that's defined and you can have 4C hair that's, you know, like, I don't know what, factor exactly like causes your curls to be you know more obscure like you can't really see your curls versus like your hair is like crazy to find it might just be density i don't really know but that's the thing too like you could just have like 4c a 4c curl pattern that's just not easily visible versus somebody you know I, actually i think it's density i think it's density somebody with a lower density or Actually, I don't know if it's density. <laughs> I don't know what factor it is, but either way, like you can have a 4C curl pattern that looks more defined, it's more visible versus somebody like you can't really see it. So I say all that to say like, there's just so many things within 4C. And I say that as an example, but this really applies to all the types 4B, 4A, 3C, 3B, all that. There's so many little mini categories in each of them that I feel like we're not acknowledging. <laughs> so that's why I say like, it's really like pointless to say like, I have type number letter hair because like, whenever people say that they're not just talking about their curl pattern, they're talking about their hair period. And it's like, no, that's not what that chart is saying. That's not what that chart is saying at all. That chart says that you have a 4B curl pattern and your curl pattern is not the only thing affecting your hair. Matter of fact, it's probably like the least important thing affecting your hair. Like that's literally just appearance. So I don't know why we still follow that chart. Like if anything, just go after people that seem to have like a similar hair appearance to yours. But yeah, look with your eyes. <laughs> Don't don't be trying to look at somebody like what somebody classifies their hair as because when you get into the other factors, it's like, is your hair really 4C? Is your hair really 4A? Like, but really like the way to determine if somebody's hair is 4A, 4B, 3C, whatever, just look at their curl pattern. But a lot of people will call somebody out and say, oh, you don't have this type of hair because they think that chart is talking about more than curl pattern but it's not. <laughs> so 4C, 
4A, 4B can have many different appearances. And then like, let's get, can we also get into how you can have more than one curl pattern in your head? You can have different, just differences in your head. Like a lot of the time, not everybody's curls are uniform. Not even curls, like not everybody's hair on their head is uniform. Like I know the back of my head is a lot more, um, is a lot more coily than the front. And in the front, like, you can't really see my curls in the front. So I guess by that, like, a lot of people would say, like, I have 4C in the front. But no, like, it's just the texture in the front of my head is different from the back. The back of my head, the hair is a lot softer and probably more dense compared to the front. So, of course, the back is going to look different from the front of my head. With that alone, it gets harder to classify your hair. It gets harder. So at what point are we gonna say like, okay, like this chart is too simple to try to classify everybody's hair. At what point are we gonna say that? Because I'm really tired. I'm tired. Like, <laughs> like our hair is more complicated than that chart. But you know, I see nothing wrong with like using how we have transformed how we see that chart to like give a like a ballpark description of what our hair is like because you know like I'll say I, I have type 4 hair but when you get into like the letters I'm like yeah I don't, I don't know about that because you know I probably got some 4b 4c 4a 3c like I got a lot of different patterns in my head and I got a lot of different textures my hair is not all the same basically so I just I just say like I got type four. I'm not going more specific than that because um, I really can't. <laughs> now there are some commonalities, I guess, that come with like these curl patterns. Like with 4C, your curls tend to be so tight that you don't see them because your hair is so thick that the curls just kind of, you know, it's just so much hair on your head that you just don't really can't really see the curls. So that's what tends to happen with a lot of people that have 4C hair. So I can see how like, you know, a lot of things get associated with the curl pattern because it's common. But that commonality does not equal like, you know, this is what everybody with 4C hair has. I think something about like high porosity tends to be more dry, so it appears more dry. Yeah, that's another thing, porosity. Like dryness will have your curls like not looking not look invisible like you won't see the curls for real because your hair is dry but because your hair is dry it's gonna look like your curls are tighter tighter than they are because you can't see them but really that's not the case and like the tightness of the curls is not really why sometimes you can't really see them because you can have thin hair with a 4c curl pattern and that'll have your hair looking more defined because you can see more like the individual curls and stuff compared to like when somebody has super, super thick 4C hair, that's different. So that whole thing about like extending the chart is just, I just think it's pointless. Like I understand why they would say that, but I think it's pointless because I think we just need a whole new system of how to identify our hair. Like, cause that whole system, this whole system we got now is just too simple. I don't know if y'all ever like read the description box or whatever, but I know when I first started YouTube in like my, my little like about me section of the description box, uh, like for the hair type part, I would just put like type four, I guess. I don't know, like, <laughs> cause I really like don't know how to classify my hair. Like I, I know the individual qualities, but overall, like what my type is, like, I don't, I don't know, like based off that chart, like I just know like my curl pattern, I have like 3C through 4C curls. I changed it recently so that it just says like the individual qualities. Like I have low porosity, medium density, um, coarse strands, or coarse thick strands. And yeah, basically just classifying my hair that way because I just feel weird when I just say like I have like type 3C, 4A because it's just my hair is not that simple. Nobody's hair is that simple, unless we just talking about a curl pattern. The one beef I have against creams is that this stuff gets everywhere. It's on my shirt, like it's on my fingers, it's 
on my water bottle, like, not my water bottle, my spray bottle. It's everywhere. I hate that. I don't know, maybe I'll make my own like hair typing chart thing that's more in depth, that considers more factors than just curl pattern. Or maybe like I'll expand the chart that we have now. Maybe I'll do that, I don't know. But I feel like I really gotta do my research on how like these qualities would affect the appearance. Cause that part I really, I'm kind of shaky on. Cause it could be a lot of things affecting appearance that, you know, you just don't know. Yeah, look at this one little coil. <laughs> oh, and fun fact, I actually made a video talking about this probably like a year or two ago. I don't really remember how long ago it was, but it was a while ago. But I'm talking about this again because the topic still seems to be a problem in the community. And also because I don't really remember what I said yeah, so if you want to see what I said like a year or two ago, you should go watch it. Because I'm pretty much saying the same thing. Like, basically, that chart is pointless because it really only encompasses, um, it really only encompasses, um, curl pattern and nothing else. But there's literally so many other things that affect our hair. So many other things. And curl pattern is probably the least important. <laughs> But y'all, let me know, like, do y'all like these kinds of videos where I just, you know, talk about whatever topic and do my hair? Like, do y'all like these videos? Because I can definitely do this more often. Because, you know, I'm not always trying new products. I'm really just sticking to what I know works sometimes. So this could be like a gateway to talk about whatever could be talked about and stuff. But I can't be the only one coming up with topics. Let me tell you, sometimes you just got to take the section and just separate your curls main really because if I just rake it through sometimes it just all clumps together and that's not what I wanted to do so I just gotta shingle it well I'm not really shingling but I'm just separating the curls you know I don't know how people do this around their whole head though like this would take literally forever like I see how some people don't like washing ghosts because they think like they gotta define every single curl and it's like, no. That's just if you want like insane definition. That ain't what I'm looking for, for real. Like I just want my hair to look good, okay? Like, you do I want definition? Yes, but it's not end all be all if I don't have it. So I just want my hair to look like my hair, okay? And that's all she wrote, y'all. Get into the definition, okay? Y'all see it. I don't need to say anything don't need to say anything at all yeah get into it yeah 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 get into it get into it <laughs> this is what the back looks like and i'm gonna give it a good little shake i always gotta shake your hair because that's really gonna help define it like it's really gonna help separate the curls and i'm gonna like shake it more off camera like trust that's not the only shaking i'm gonna do but i can't really shake my head around sitting where I'm at. So I'm gonna come back to y'all when it's done drying. I'm gonna let it air dry because um, fun fact, it's actually like 80 something degrees out in Louisiana right now. It's, it's February and it's like 80 degrees. So I'm gonna let it air dry. And I'm gonna come back to y'all when I'm ready to, you know, stretch, fluff, pick, all that stuff. And yeah. All right y'all, so it's actually not the next day. It's actually Monday, so it's the next next day um because i didn't do anything yesterday so there's no point in taking my hair down but yeah my hair is already stretched because i always sleep with my hair in a pineapple so that stretches the back but also i have my hair up in a bun because i went to the gym this morning so my hair is kind of stretched already but i'm gonna stretch it with a blow dryer to knock some of these product flakes out that i got in my hair you can see like they already fallen out. So yeah, it's really just, I apply too much product in the foot for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my edges first using Evan. And <clears throat> just real quick, I ain't doing nothing too fancy cause when my hair is down, you can't really see my edges, but I'm gonna lay them anyway for, you know, the sake of the final look, but also because I put my hair up a lot so I might just, you know, might just need my edges to be laid for when my hair is up. 
but yeah so just gonna do this real quick y'all why is why does it decided to pop up all of a sudden like who told you to be here one thing about having nails that i find annoying is stuff gets under your nails like i just it gives me the ick <laughs> so i'm gonna be using the silk elements heat protectant and also Jamaican mango and lime island oil. I don't know why I fell out of the habit of using heat protectant when I stretch my hair, but you should definitely use heat protectant. <laughs> definitely do that. Um, yeah, I don't know why I stopped. I just kind of, I don't know. I don't really have an excuse, but use heat protectant, y'all. So I got it on warm heat and I'm gonna do it on high. Man, see, I gotta listen to my intuition more because something told me like, you're applying too much product, but I was like, I think it'll be fine this time. Nope. It's always the front too. It's always the front that I gotta be careful with, but it's fine. I got most of it out. So this is the final look. It actually looks really good. It's just, it's more flakes than I thought. Like, I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's, it's quite a bit of flakes in the front and in the back. I let this be a lesson. Don't apply so much product if you got low porosity hair because I sometimes your hair is just not gonna budge. And if you are gonna apply a lot of product, use a lot of water. I I'd have made this mistake again. So I like y'all. That was not the final product. I went to class and the flakes was really getting on my nerves and I just uh can't no. So what I ended up doing when I got back is water and gel because what we want to do is we want to dilute the cream that's flaking up in my hair right so the way to do that is with water and you want to smooth out you know you want to smooth out your sections or evenly like distribute the product better and water it down basically so that's what i did with the water but in diluting trying to dilute the cream you end up diluting the gel too and you know we don't want to dilute the gel gel is fine but that's a consequence of that. So that's why I go in with a little bit more gel. So so what I'm basically just like balancing the products out because what happened was um, the reason why I had um, flakes is because I had too much cream. So easy fix. Hopefully when it's dry, it won't have any flakes. I don't think it will. If it does, then literally like, I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but I think I think I'm good. It's really like just the front that I'm worried about, but I think even in the front, like I'm okay. I don't see any flakes for real. At least any flakes that I'm seeing as my curls are drying. Anything else is kind of just disappearing. You know, that white residue's disappearing. So yeah, I'm gonna come back to y'all when my hair is dry, stretched, fluffed, all that. Cause I don't feel a need to show y'all that again, because I'm literally gonna do the same thing. But yeah, I'm gonna see y'all later. Okay, y'all, this, this is the final look, <laughs> okay? Uh, I feel way better now. There's like barely any flakes in my hair. I mean, it's still like a few like left like in the front, but you, you don't notice it. So happy about that. Um, a lot more moisturized. It looks, I felt like it looked drier before. So now, yeah, I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better about this. <laughs> okay, cause them flakes yesterday, those flakes yesterday were not it. Like I cannot, I hate flakes of any kind. Like dandruff, um, product flakes, uh, products from products not mixed. Like I hate all of it. I really, cause it just looks bad and it's annoying because if let's if you wear it black like I was yesterday, then it's gonna show up on your shirt and it's gonna look like something wrong with you. But no, girl, my products just acting up. So. Yeah, y'all, this is the final look. I'm gonna give y'all an up close. And yeah, let me show y'all my back. So yes, it looks way better. I feel a lot happier about these results. So yeah, that just couldn't leave y'all hanging like that. A uh, product combo that gives you flakes, like no. But it wasn't the products not mixing together. They mixed together fine. It's just, I used too much product on my low porosity hair. So. You know, it's always fun figuring out what the threshold for your hair is when it comes to using products. But yeah, when in doubt, if you think you apply too much product, just go back in with some more water and dilute the product and you should be good after that for the most part. Yeah, y'all, that's the end of the video. Hopefully y'all enjoyed, got some value out of it. 
um, learn something from this, anything. I'll link all the products in the description. Um, you can subscribe, like, comment, share, turn on your bell notifications anytime you want to get um, notified each time I post. If you want to go to Extra Mile. You don't have to, it's no pressure, but if you want to support your girl real quick, you just hit those buttons at the bottom of the screen. I mean, you might as well since you are here. Um, but I digress. <laughs> Remember to never stop growing and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.